Never. I told her, but yeah, there you are where he hot or hot. You know, if it got down to 75, the Filipinos would all put on a coat or a sweater. They thought it was really cold. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, it's good to see everybody here. And I'm just thankful that we're not having freezing precipitation with these cold temperatures. So we've got a blessing there, whether we want to acknowledge that or not. It could be a lot worse. Um, I'll go into the announcements. They mentioned in the worship service, City Conversations, a special guest uh, from Texas A&M, Dr. Micah Green, Professor of Chemical Engineering, as Dr. Osborne explained who this guy is and uh, his kind of approach to things. Uh, Sunday, January 21st, 6 p.m. on the other campus. No, that's oh, on here. our campus. Here. Yeah, on our campus. With dessert to follow. Chris Osborne didn't mention that. <laughs> That's the, that's the thing to encourage everybody. Yeah, come. yeah. <laughs> Bring your own ice cream, I guess. <laughs> uh, so that's the 21st, 6 p.m. here on this campus. Dr. Micah Green. New members class will start meeting. We'll meet next Sunday right after our morning worship service. It's a one-time class that talks to people that are interested in finding out things about the church how to join, what it means to join, to be a part of our friendship. And we talk about core values and how you can be a part of what God is doing through this body of believers and then on this campus and in our other campus within your community, as Chris Osborne said, in the community and church and family <laughs> in those areas. Uh, Midweek schedule, Wednesday night classes start up January 24th, and these are classes that will be opened up for people, so you might want to invite people to join. Danny, uh, you're going to teach Financial Peace University. That's amazing. You know so, what's amazing, though? Huh? As much as, much as we put it out there. Yeah. So few people respond, and I think people are just paralyzed with uh, too much debt right now, you know? So if y'all want to pray that people that need to be there will be there. Good, good point. Yeah. We attended when it was at the other campus, and we're going through some rough financial time. I was having to work two or three jobs and had a lot of credit card debt, and we finally worked through all that. And, and so it's a great class, great information. Uh, <laughs> And it's sad that the people that need it don't want to respond to that, but there's answers there, there's solutions, and it's it gives you a piece downstream to work through those things. So Lana's going to be teaching that, and then Sermon on the Mount, is that Mark will be teaching that on Wednesday night? Um, and then uh, Mom to Mom or Celebrate Recovery or two other events in our church that'll be going on. And then the youth are uh, involved in a one weekend action-packed uh, time designed for students across our community. The students will worship together, have recreation time and meet in homes for in-depth Bible study. This is February 16 to 18. And the cost is $95. For that but if you bring a brand new guest to the one weekend this is for the youth then the youth person and the first time guest gets a 50 percent discount on their 95 dollars so that's a nice 95 for two yeah two for one yeah two for one <laughs> and there's registration detailed about that if you know of any youth that might want to get involved with that. Uh, that's um, online where you can order 
one weekend hoodie or sweatshirt while supplies last. Um, any other announcements that we have before we go to a prayer request? Um, and moving on into the prayer requests, Betty texted Pat Walling this morning about 8.30. And she said, I wonder if Pat's up yet, because Tommy's been in surgery last week. And I said, well, she's got two dogs. She's probably <laughs> awake. And so she texted her, but I don't know if she got an answer how Tommy's doing. Tommy, last week we talked about he had a um, tooth infection. So he was concerned. The doctor thought they may not let him have his surgery, which was lower back and legs or uh, affected parts of his body, but the dentist looked at him and said, no, you're okay to go ahead and have the surgery. So his surgery was two doctors, two surgical procedures, one last Tuesday and one Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So he did get his surgery and uh, we don't know if he's still in the hospital or if he's gotten to go home yet. So hopefully he's back home or getting close to getting back home. So that's Tom Walling. Uh, anyone else? Donna? Um, our daughter, Lisa, has COVID. And, oh. You know, it's crazy because she's probably around fewer people than anybody that we know. Oh. But she did go to the doctor's office. Mm -hmm. And you just wonder, okay, did she get COVID from the doctor? I don't know. Oh. But anyway, you Very know, she has a lot of... Uh, uh, a lot of physical challenges and a lot of health issues and so this is just one more thing but fortunately she called the doctor immediately and they were able to get medicine to her immediately so huh. she said she feels like it started working so wow mm -hmm. betty's brother who is 83 is in kind of an independent living place and they've been having several cases of covid there and they've had to shut down their dining room yeah. And they have to deliver the food individually to all the <laughs> residents in their rooms trying to get a hold of the COVID outbreak over there. So, Anyone else with a prayer request or praise? I have a praise. Okay. My son got a job. Yeah. <laughs> He's been looking for work. What kind of... What uh, kind well, of? he's going to work for the post office. Oh, okay. And so he was really, really happy. Is he the one that puts those photos up on the wall that, <laughs> if you're wanted? He's going to be a rural carrier. I, I think he's going to run a rural <laughs> mail. Okay, okay. That's what right. it's in Michigan. Oh. Oh. In Michigan. Michigan, yeah, this, he's going to do it at the nearby town, a little, little bitty town. In Michigan. That'll be a cold job. Yeah, he's, he's been a salesman okay. for several years. He said, I don't have to persuade anyone to buy anything now. So the job comes to me. That's right. Wow. Snow. Okay, we will um, go into our song. It's going to be Amazing Grace, number 202. I looked on YouTube and I saw several options where people were singing Amazing Grace. That's what I try to do to find a music option for, our, for this time frame on Sundays. And every one of them was skipping verses. They weren't singing all five. So I decided we would just sing it a cappella again today and sing all five verses. Uh, amazing Grace, 202. Some of you may or may not have a page in there because some of these pages have been taken out and we got these books from the other campus and we just do the best we can. These are some old hymns. Most of us know most of the words. Uh, Brother Mark, when we finish the song, would you lead us in prayer before Brother Will comes to teach? Okay, number 202, Amazing Grace. <laughs> Need one like to lead it? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I was once lost, but now was blind, but now 
but see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. The Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope, secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. Through many torments and snares, I have already become this grace and cross. We save the soul, and grace will be before. When we live ten thousand years, right shall be as the sun. We don't have to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Doug, I'm sorry we started. We could have had you do some drumming. And Not this morning. <laughs> Disaster. <laughs> All right, let's pray. Okay. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to gather and study your holy word. Lord, we give thanks that Brother Tommy was able to have his surgery. And Lord, we're thankful that the doctors gave a, a good report on the outcome. Lord, we pray for a swift recovery and we pray that you give uh, Tommy grace as he goes through the uh, the rehab and the physical therapy that will, will surely follow. Give you thanks that our son found a new job. And Lord, we're just thankful that you answer prayers and you meet our needs according to your riches and glory. Let's pray that you'll bless Brother Will now as he teaches our Bible lesson. Lord, help us to be doers of the word and not hearers only. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. 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 So, yeah. Well, good, good cold morning. At least we're not having ice water. Yeah. And hopefully we won't have much if we have any. Uh, I don't. Does anybody here like um, stories about old explorers and sailing ships and stuff like that? Um, I always enjoy those. Sure, sure. One of one of those that starts off kind of that way was Shogun, and and uh, it, it's a it's a ship that uh, the Spanish and Portuguese pretty well controlled and knew how to get to to Japan and China. And they protected that. They didn't want the other countries to know how to do that. So that gave them all of the trading from those countries. And and uh, this British um, navigator, and I think it was a Dutch sailing ship, and this na British navigator got a, a, a hold of a log from a Portuguese ship that had the instructions about how to sail around the tip of South America and back up and and and, and the, toward the end of that uh, sailing experience, it reminds me of the the uh, what was that poem? Uh, water, water everywhere, and not a drop to drink. Water, water everywhere, and ere the boards did shrink. Uh, that's what happens to them. They they get kind of uh, hung up in a stillness out there in the middle of Pacific Ocean and drift along for days and run out of food and water and stuff. And many of them 
start dying. And um, in fact, all of them are really unconscious by the time they wash up close to the Japanese shore and Japanese sailors come out and, and take control of the ship and bring them in. And then it's the story mainly of this navigator and his relationship to the Japanese warlords and stuff. It's a, if you've never read it and you like that kind of thing, I recommend it highly. But uh, it kind of reminded me, that, how do you think Noah and, and his, his family felt when they finally looked out and saw land? Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I would imagine it'd be kind of like one of these old sailors that, you know, he's got the guy up in the tip top of the sails and he says, land, ho, oh, you know, and they've been sailing. They don't know where they're going or what's there or anything, but, uh, you know, and they're running out of food and running out of water and they finally land, ho, oh, they got the promise of maybe, you know, some solid land under their feet after bouncing around in, in the in the in the waves for maybe weeks and months and and uh uh the promise of maybe fresh water and food and and of course a lot of them were exploring and wanting to find riches and, <laughs> and gold and and such but um noah uh, uh, Moses, uh noah noah and his family weren't uh after any riches they were just going to end up starting civilization all over again. And and we kind of have some parallels between uh, Genesis 1 and and here in, in, in uh, uh, Genesis chapter 8, where our, our lesson is for today. Um, in fact, it starts off, it says, but God remembered uh, Noah. God remembered Noah. I, I don't think it means that he forgot him. <laughs> I just think it means basically that it was time for him to do something with Noah and get this new civilization started. He had destroyed the old civilization because it was so exceedingly wicked. And 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 remember the story says, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, when everything else was and and I pointed out earlier in, in the chronology that you find there that uh, Noah's grandfather died the same year as the flood came. And Methuselah, the oldest guy, his, his father had already passed away. But I always kind of figured that maybe after Methuselah died, he was probably a righteous man too. And maybe his father was a righteous man and Moses, uh, Moses. Noah's the righteous man and and he found he was the kind of the last <laughs> righteous man it seems to be on earth and and he found favor with the Lord and everything God tells him to do he does it um that's a pretty good recommendation there um but uh when we look at at this time of of recreation, uh, it says that the wind, the I think the Hebrew word is R U A C H. Is that right? Ruach, ruach, ruach. It's 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 wind, but it's also if you go back to chapter eight, verse one, it talks about the spirit of God moved across the waters. That's ruach also. That's the same. The same Hebrew word. So you have uh, the same words being used, the same spirit of God kind of moving the waters and and uh, hovering over the waters in the beginning. And the waters and the dry ground were separated. Well, in, in our episode today, the dry ground begins to show up. Um, and then the, the on both accounts, the vegetation appears and, and uh, the birds and animals and humans follow in order. And and when you've got dry ground family, finally God tells Noah and his family to, to leave the ark and take all the animals and, and go. So that's where we are today. And our lesson really there starts down in, in verse 10. Um, Genesis 8, verse 10 to 14. Anybody have that want to read it? Genesis 8, verses 10 to 14. So he waited 
yet another seven days and again sent out a dove from the ark. And the dove came to him toward evening. And behold, in her beak was a freshly picked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the water was abated from the earth. Then he waited an, yet another seven days and sent out the dove, but she did not return to him again. Now it came about in the first 600, in the, in the 601st year, in the first month, on the first of the month, the water was dried up from the earth. Then Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the surface of the ground was dried up. And in the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. Yeah. Um, there's two birds mentioned in this chapter eight. The first bird he sends out is what? Remember? Raven. A raven. And, and a raven is, is not a, uh, I guess you'd say not a, 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 a clean animal. And, you know, it talks about clean and unclean animals, but clean and unclean animals aren't really defined until you get over into the law of Moses, you know, and Leviticus and numbers over in there. But evidently, God had already told them which which animals were clean and, and worthy of sacrifice. Um, we just don't have that. That's just not something that Moses reported at this point because he evidently um, we don't know the order that Moses wrote, read the, wrote these first five books but he's he's writing them and, and maybe the Lord has him working on one part sometimes and another part sometimes and if any of you have done any writing on a major work um, you know sometimes your mind just gets a, a, a sudden inspiration to do one part and you take off writing and writing. Anytime you get inspired when you're writing, you want to write it <laughs> because uh, you may get writer's block on, on other parts. And so you, you, you take what you can get when you can get it. Uh, as some of you know, I, I ran a publishing company for years and have, have written and helped a, a lot of folks write books, but um, uh, Moses wrote all of this down, and 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 it's not like we've got every point of the story. Um, it's kind of like what they said in the New Testament: if they wrote down everything Jesus said, there wouldn't be enough books to hold it. And and I think that's part of the story here too. He's he's getting the story of, uh, across to us of creation and of, and of God and who He is and His relationship to man, and and that's. That's the purpose of what he's what he's doing here. So we're just following along. But he sends out the raven, and the raven never comes back. Yeah. And and uh, uh, then he sends out a dove. Now a dove has always been a symbol of peace, and especially he says when the dove the first time couldn't find any place to land or nothing, and and came back, and Moses took him in, and he waits about a week. And he sends the dove out again. And this time the dove comes back. And what does he have? Olive leaf. He has an olive leaf in his, in his mouth. And, and you've probably seen symbols of a, of a, of a dove with an olive leaf. And it's, a, it's a, become a symbol of peace uh, internationally, really. And, and not, just, not just for the Jewish race. But that's where it comes from, is, is this story. Um, and he waits uh, about a week more, and he sends that dove back out again. And what happens? He doesn't come back. He don't come back. <laughs> he's he's taking advantage of that olive tree, <laughs> and and uh, so that's that's where we find uh, here. He, he he sent out the the first dove. Uh, and and it came back. The second dove came back with the leaf, and then the third dove um, didn't return. So it says, in the six hundred and first year, in the first month, in the first day of the month, the waters were dried from off the earth. Uh, and and with the waters dried and the plants beginning to regenerate. Now, how long has the waters been on the earth? One hundred fifty days. It hadn't rained before the oh. flood, but it just kind of over a year. Mm -hmm. 
this place has been flooded for over a year. They've been floating around out there for over a year. Uh, how many plants, how many trees do you know can live underwater for a year? <laughs> so what, what I think we really have here, if you just kind of think rationally about it, God's causing these plants to come back and start yeah. growing again. And, and that's no big problem for God. He created the whole thing in the first place. So, you know, uh, but the grasses are growing, the trees are growing, um, the animals and, and all uh, are going to be going out. And he says, so Noah went out. Uh, God's told Noah three things. The first thing he tells Noah is to build the ark. And Noah built it. Now, he told him all that all that is recorded here is the size of the ark. So many long and so much wide and so high and three decks. But I have a feeling that God was sending his Holy Spirit into Moses into Noah's head and and he was inspired to to do this. It's kind of like again writing a book. <laughs> Sometimes you know, the Lord wants you to write this and and it, and he just kind of inspires you to 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 take off and write. And and you sometimes can look back later at something that you wrote and you said, man, I wrote that. I mean, you know, really, it, it's not something you would really feel like you'd have normally done. But but the Lord just inspired you and, and you did it. And I think that's what what kind of happened. So Noah goes out with his sons and his wife and his son's wives. Um, it was interesting, a um, long time ago, I mean, it probably was 25, 30 years ago, maybe more. Uh, I read about a study they did, a, a kind of a genetical study, and they said that, that men don't, but women do, pass on a genetical uh, uh, part to their offspring and they can use those parts to trace back families. And they went, this study went all over the world taking DNA samples of people. And they they did trace back that everybody on earth all came from one woman. I, you don't find that study anymore. I mean, I, it was a lengthy big study and, and I read a bunch of it and and I was amazed by that fact that it comes back. It even tells how, about how many years they think that happened. And it also shows that human the, the human population of the world had like to died out a couple of times in in history. But it all started with that genetic signal from that one woman that is stayed all the way through until present time. Um, because right now you've got Noah's wife, but she's the, she is the mother of the three sons, but then they've got three wives that she wasn't the mother of. So their genetic signal had to come all the way back from, from Eve, if that study is, was right. If anybody ever finds that, would they please let me know? I've looked for it. I looked for it when I was studying for this lesson, but I couldn't find anything. I, I, I kind of have a sneaky feeling that a lot of the scientists have tried to get rid of that because uh, it's, it makes it makes too much biblical sense. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, it says that every beast and every creeping thing and every bird and everything that moves upon the earth went out by families from the earth. And when it says going out by families, it makes you think that perhaps some of those animals had had young ones, had babies while they were in the ark. Um, birds multiply faster than a year. Uh, certainly worms and snakes and things like that multiply faster than a year. Um, but it, it's just... Uh, yeah. And and uh, the in in Genesis and in a lot of the Old Testament said that the Hebrew word for animal basically was just M I N men. 
uh, and it uh, translated kinds of animals. But here, no, uh, uh, Moses used a, a word that's a lot, lots longer than that. And, and it's a word that refers to families of animals. So they have families of animals go off. And, and uh, so you have this new beginning for all the animals. And what does God tell both the animals, command both the animals and Moses? Yeah. Scatter out and replenish the earth. Now, the animals obey. But we're going to find that Moses and his descendants didn't know, <laughs> and and that's going to lead to another another story. So they um, they they these animals swarm out and and are fruitful and multiply, and and then Noah's sons and his sons' wives uh, start um, replenishing the human species, uh, and. It seems like uh, maybe Noah took some cuttings of some grapevines with him into the ark because one of the first things he does when he gets out is to plant a vineyard. And after he plants the vineyard and starts harvesting grapes, uh, look down in Genesis 8, verses 20 to 22. Somebody want to read that? Verse 20 to 22. Uh, then Noah, Noah built an altar to the Lord. Uh, he took some of every kind of clean animal and every kind of clean bird and offered burnt offering on, uh, on the altar. And then the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma. He, and he said to himself, I will um, never again curse the ground because of the human beings, even though the uh, inkling of the human heart is evil from uh, your youth onward. I will never strike a, again, strike down every living thing as I have done. Uh, as long as the earth endures, seed, seed time and uh, harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and the day and night will never cease. So uh, after all this experience of all these many, many weeks and months on the ark and, and everything, every person, every animal, everything on earth being destroyed, except for those that are in the ark, and they come off of the ark and, and Noah builds an altar. Um, found that it says that the word altar is used of uh, 401 times in the Old Testament. And this is the first one. Now you have Cain and Abel offering sacrifices. We have that story, but it doesn't mention an altar in that story. So this is the first time that an altar is made. And, and you can probably remember a lot of stories on where Abraham and, and Isaac and Jacob and all do altars. Um, but this is the first one. So, uh, in, in, in the Old Testament, that word for altar also can be, mean a slaughtering place because altars involve a blood sacrifice. And, and so, um, while Cain and Abel brought offerings to God, this is the, the first one that's, that's mentioned. And, and he's, he gave the clean animals and clean birds. Um, in Genesis 7, verses 2 and 3, Noah was instructed to take seven pair of the clean creatures. Um, we have early on the story, he's supposed to take two by two, and he does. But then of the clean animals, he took seven. Now, I'm not sure whether that was seven more or just seven together. But the seven then gave him the ability to, to take one of each of those and make a sacrifice. And and that's that's what he did. So, and he offered the the burn offering. Um, uh, most of these uh, things in Hebrew, uh, offering burn offering, all have to do with ascending to a high place. Um, it seems that most of the time altars were made on top of hills or maybe up on the side of a mountain. Um, uh, so 
uh, it was a places of worship just got to be called a high place. Even I think the temple in Jerusalem was referred to as going up to the temple. Of course, it was up to <laughs> Jerusalem kind of sits on a mount and, and it, it's nearly everything around it. You got to go up to get to, to that, that, that part of Jerusalem up there. So, uh, and, and it talks about that uh, when the Lord smelled the praising aroma, do you think that really means that God smelt the burning flesh and, and like that physically? I don't really think so. I think what he's saying, it's a pleasing, and it, this the same language is used all through the Old Testament. And I think it's pleasing because they're obeying and doing and worshiping God as God wants them to do. And that's pleasing to him. It's always pleasing to God, I think, when we we have him in our in his right place in our heart and lives. Um, that's what pleases him. It's not that we come to church every Sunday. It's not that we give a million bucks or something. Uh, that's that's good if that's what God lays on your heart and you're being obedient in that way. Thank you for doing that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a million. Yeah, me too. Uh, but what what's pleasing to God, that pleasing aroma to God, I think, is is that that obedience and that worship and, and that being right and righteous before God, um, it, you know, go up, Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord, not because he was just a great guy or something, but, but because he was one of the only persons left on earth that was really worshiping God and honoring God and putting God first in, in his life. And, and it, uh, one of my, one of my friends, uh, had a series of just kind of novel type books that tried to, you know, telling the Old Testament stories in these novel type books. And and they have in the story about Noah and building the ark and all that, they have all the people coming around and and making fun of him and his sons and laughing and jeering at them and all because, you know, it had never rained. And here he is building an ark up on a hillside and 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 it's too far from the the river or the the sea, you know, he couldn't get that big thing down there. And they all just, you know, and he keeps preaching to them for 70 years, the Old Testament story tells us that he preached to them and and they wouldn't listen. Uh, he's trying to get them to repent and, and do it. But, um, but God, you know, smells this pleasing aroma. Um, and I think that pleasing aroma just satis just speaks of of Moses satisfying God's requirements and, and, and avoiding his wrath. And and uh, uh, and it says the Lord said in his heart. Now he wasn't talking to Noah; he was talking to himself. He says that he's what I'm never again going to curse the ground. Uh, he had cursed the ground back when. <laughs> Adam and Eve sinned. He cursed the ground further when Cain killed Abel. And now he says, you know, he really cursed the ground in the sense that when he sends the flood and destroys every living thing on the land, by the way, it didn't say it didn't say he destroyed every living thing in the oceans and the waters. So I guess maybe whales were around before and after. Um, I like whales, <laughs> um, but he said, I'll never again curse the ground. And, and, and he, you know, he knows, he knows that Moses and his sons and their wives are still part of the fallen people. They are still going to have that sin problem just because Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord doesn't mean he was sinless or perfect or his descendants were going to be any better than all those people that were destroyed. God knows what's going to happen. Uh, but um, he, he, 
He uh, knows that in the intentions of man's heart is what? Yeah, what that verse 22 say? He says, for the intentions of man heart is evil from his youth. So I've always said, if you want to know how the nature of people are, put put a put one really nice toy in between two babies. <laughs> they will almost tear each other to pieces if they could uh, to fight over that one toy. There's no cooperation, <laughs> and that's just the way people are naturally. Um, we we if we're doing things good, sometimes it's the only reason a lot of people do anything good is for the recognition or something that it brings them. They their 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 heart uh, is so often not good. <laughs> And and that's just the reality that that we have as as being fallen people. So the intentions of man heart, the, the that sinful condition of the world hadn't changed after the flood, and so the consequences of Adam and Eve's sin is going to just continue. Um, and and we get to that really easy and fast because we have the Tower of Babel story that comes on real quick here, and and. You know, people didn't scatter out over the earth. They all went and built this great city and decided they'd make a tower that would reach into heaven so they could be just like God. Uh, no. <laughs> um, but he says that, that so long as the earth exists, there will he will not bring another flood. He will not destroy humanity by flood. Th this... This flood had interrupted the natural order of the world, and I think including the seasons and and maybe even the sun and the moon. And and God says, no, nope, this is not. That's I'm never going to do this again. That's the one time event. Um, so long as the earth exists, but there's going to be a day, and that's what it implies real clearly. There, there's going to be a time and a day. When the earth is going to exist, it, it ceased to exist. Uh, and the Bible tries to prepare us for that. So, any comments? It's just another one of those good stories about. God and mankind and the relationship um, and and uh, we can see what happens in the past. I, I don't know if any of any of you uh, read and follow. I I like archaeology, and I have one magazine that I, that gets into some it's, it's biblical archaeology. But there's also some other archaeology that I find from time to time. Um, and there are cities all over the world, practically ancient, almost beyond knowing how old they really are, with blocks of stone that would more than fill this room that are stacked up and, and, and make these cities. And you remember in England, the Stonehenge uh, and those stones, they said, came from oh, a long ways away from there and all. And I get to thinking, you know, it, it talks about the time before the flood when people were so wicked. And it even says that 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 some of the angels had taken wives of the man of mankind. And and uh, talks about mighty men of valor and, and those kinds of terms. And I just wonder if some of that stuff that was almost beyond dating and those maybe that's some of the remnants of things before the flood um, I don't know it's just been interesting it's just interesting because the archaeologists agree to disagree <laughs> about a lot of those those ruins and, and things but I think the, the whole thing out of this you know we just need to strive to be like Noah and and do what 
we know we ought to do to please God. And unlike Noah, we've got God's word. We don't have to wait for God to speak to us like we've heard of the, at least the three times here that, that God spoke directly to Noah, told him to, to build the ark, to get in the ark, and, and then get out of the ark. Um, but God's word can speak to us daily, especially when we read it prayerfully. So we've got a lot better situation than Noah had in that sense. Um, and, and God's spirit wants to work in our hearts and lives. Um, that's what Jesus is telling about. And, and he, you know, he said it's best that he go. He told his disciples, it's best that I go because then the Lord's going to send one that can work with you and empower you daily. Not just every great once in a while. Uh, so I think that's that's kind of the bottom line to this story is that while the sinful condition remained, um, God continued to work with mankind, and He continues continues to to. I'm not sure it's a good term or not, but he continues to manipulate history and circumstances to bring us to the point of, of, of him doing his will. It, it, it's amazing to me. I like Old Testament. Um, Jesus said it best. He said, the Old Testament speaks of me. The Old Testament tells all about who God is and who the Savior is going to be. And, and uh, the stories that keep on going, like this one, this story here, just tells us more about God and who God is and, and how we need to relate to him. And basically kind of a warning in a sense of when you don't relate to him um, in the right way, there's probably going to be some bad things that are going to happen in your life. And, and it won't be because God's bad. It won't be because he's mean. It'll be because he loves you enough to try to, to turn you away from doing those bad things. Um, it's kind of like my mom used to say, uh, this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. <laughs> when I misbehaved, um, sometimes I got a good paddling. And and um, I, frankly, I don't think one of those uh, paddlings hurt me long term at all. In fact, it probably did me a lot of good. Um, and I kind of wish as an old educator, that people would start bringing some discipline back to a lot of our young people because I personally think that we're sending them right down the road toward Noah's day mm -hmm. when we don't. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other comments? Well, let's continue to pray for Tommy and... and, um. and the, I have an update from yeah. the, would you like me to share that? Yeah. Um Love to hear. sorry I couldn't be in here um kind of put on a help with the children hat again. Um so I text so I've been talking with Pat almost every day and uh, the surgery went well. Uh, she would not let me come up there. I was almost begging. No. Uh, so this morning I texted her and she said, how I wish I could say he's doing great, but he's in pain this morning. Good thing he slept all night. He came home yesterday. So he's home. Uh, it was a very long day for both of us. I'm doing the ice therapy on his back. Uh, this is supposed to help. I want to thank everyone for your love and prayers. 
but no visitors yet. So keep praying for them. Mm -hmm. Um, and did we talk about tailgate at all? Did we? No. Okay. So um, the 11th of February is the tailgate Sunday to honor, you know, we had uh, then it, uh, they switched back and said, let's just celebrate the fall and college football and high school football. And, oh, okay, well, let's change it back. This year, we're going to go back to uh, the Super Bowl. So that's why it's February 11th. And so as a class, we need to come up with what food we can present. Um, and uh, so let's talk it up big next week. So be thinking what what you would be easy for you to bring. Because what that means is it's just a food set out uh, at tables in the atrium. And we're supposed to decorate and look very festive and support the the uh, Super Bowl. So it's like a booth for different you, groups. If you call it a booth, yeah. it has a background and a table. And it is a competition. It is a competition. <laughs> so if we really want to. I have a prize for the, the, the best booth. And I, th I guess it's the best decorated or it's the, the best food. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> Every, I guess everything. everything. There's a really cute statue that you get. And we get to have it in here, I guess, for a year. I guess, but uh, so be thinking what we would like to do. And if you have extra cowboy paraphernalia or Super Bowl stuff at your house that you could share to decorate with, that'd be great too. But so next week we can, we can kind of see what thoughts you have. So. And everybody should vote for our booth, right? <laughs> oh, well, that's true too. That's true too. Oh, yes. Well, we did win. So, Eddie, you got the Cowboys going to the Super Bowl, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it, it whether it's the Cowboys or or the Houston team, if it's a Texas professional team, I always root for them. But uh, um, and Houston did good yesterday. So, but I don't know. To Dallas place today, don't they? Yes. So we'll That's find out whether the Dallas. At least they don't have to play in whatever it was, two degree weather. Oh, yes. That's mercy. That came last well, they had to cancel that one game. Yeah. Well, because, they and, and, and last night the I, They showed the camera looking out across that field, and it was it was almost a whiteout. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you could hardly see anything out there. The one in Buffalo, they had to postpone because of a blizzard. Yeah, when you postpone things in Buffalo, you know it's really bad. But <laughs> yeah. Buffalo is one of the snow centers of the world, I think. Yeah. Lake effect snow. Yeah, that lake effect snow, because it just, it, they get dumped on by the foot. Well, but when you have a team like Miami, who has to go up into uh, zero degrees, and play, I thought, yeah, that was probably a game changer right there. Yeah. Well, fortunately, a lot of those boys, even though they're playing for the Miami team, they're from up north. Yeah, but the quarterback is from Hawaii. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. He was. 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 He I guess you just bite the bullet. <laughs> yeah, well, they lost. They bit it all right. <laughs> they bit it. Bit the dirt. So, or bit the ice in that case. <laughs> That's right. Lord, we do thank you for the day. We thank you for the fellowship. We thank you for your word. We thank you for all these stories in the Old Testament that, that help to tell us more about you and who you are and, and how you want to relate to each of us. We just uh, pray that you help uh, us to to keep the your your our relationship with you in mind that we would stay close to your word and and, and close to you in prayer and and continue uh, in fellowship with other Christians and help us to be good witnesses in the different places we go and and the people we know and people we meet. We just ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah.